This week's Torah portion has a beautiful scene. When God commands Moses, Moshe, to instruct his brother Aharon and Aharon's sons, the Kohanim, the priests, how to bless the Jewish people. The formula that God gives them is the exact same one that the Kohanim continue to use to bless the congregation nowadays during the morning service in Israel and on the holiday or Yom Tov service outside Israel. I have very vivid memories as a kid of listening to the Kohanim chant their blessing. I would be underneath my father's talus because you're not supposed to look, and I'd be elbowing or getting elbowed by one of my younger siblings, resisting the urge to look at what was going on. And now, as a parent, it's an even more memorable moment, an incredible bonding experience when my children are underneath my talus and I'm warning them not to look. One young man many years ago couldn't resist the urge. His name was Leonard Nimoy, the famous actor. Five or six guys get up on the bima on the stage and they're facing the congregation. They get their talit over their heads and they start this chanting. My father said to me, don't look. So everybody's got their, their eyes covered with their hands and they've got their talit down over their faces. And I hear this strange sound coming from them. They're doing like It was chilling. You know? <laughs> Whoa, something, something major is happening here. So I peeked and I saw them with their hands stuck out from beneath their telly like this towards the congregation. I thought, wow. The rest, as they say, is history. During the filming of one of the early episodes of Star Trek, Nimoy, playing Spock, decided that Spock needed a Vulcan salute. So he borrowed the Kohanic hand gesture that he had seen when he peaked as a kid during the Birchas Kohanim, the priestly benediction, and thereby made it famous. So the next time you see a Vulcan salute on a tombstone, you'll know you're looking at the grave of a Kohen. Now realize, the priests, the Kohanim, aren't actually blessing us. Only God can issue blessings. What they're doing is standing in between heaven and earth, asking God to shower us with blessings and reminding us that blessings only come from God. And so we should direct our hearts and our heads towards heaven. Similarly, they used to serve in the Holy Temple in the base of Mikdash, which was the physical juncture between heaven and earth. Kohanim also stand as the juncture between today and tomorrow, making sure that Judaism can continue from one generation to the next. And that makes sense, because they took over for the firstborn sons who were supposed to be the original Kohanim until they lost that privilege during the sin of the golden calf. A firstborn son turns children into parents when he's born, allowing them to continue to the next generation. We should also remember that blessings are meant to multiply something that already exists. That's why we're careful to make sure there's bread on the table when we say the grace after meals, because we want God to increase what we already have, or to at least safeguard it. Now, when we stand as congregants, listening to the birchas kohanim, to the kohanim chant, and say their benediction, their blessings, presumably, or hopefully, each of us has at least a dollar in the bank. So God can work with that. He can make it grow. But it would also behoove us to make sure that we've got at least a dollar, a shekel, a pound, a lira in our spiritual bank account so God can make those grow as well. Live long and prosper.